Hello witches, wizards, and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, creating recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we created a twist on the classic sherbet lemon recipe, this time for a chewy gummy version, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if it's your first time in the kitchen and you want to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's head back into the chamber to find out what's next. Okay, so after last week's sweet treat, let's head back into the book to see what's next. Okay, so Sherbet Lemons were the end of chapter 11, so we'll move on to chapter 12, the Polyjuice Potion. Harry is now inside Dumbledore's office and he sees the sorting hat and he's wondering a little bit whether it made the right decision to put him into Gryffindor. He then stumbles across a half-plucked turkey looking creature which explodes into flames. He's a little bit worried that it's because of him, but then Dumbledore comes over to reassure him. Fawkes is a phoenix and that's what they do. <laughs> He's also talking to Dumbledore a bit about the Sorting Hat's choice and Dumbledore has reassured him. He's also not in any trouble so he's got away with this one and he leaves to go and catch up with the Gryffindors. Fred and George are winding him up about maybe being the heir of Slytherin and that's where I can see our next recipe. Oh don't she wailed every time Fred asked Harry loudly who he was planning to attack next or George pretended to ward Harry off with a large clove of garlic when they met. Sorry vampires, this one probably isn't for you. If you'd like to recreate this savoury babka garlic bread, then all the ingredients you need, along with the method and instructions, are up on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. So today we needed to use garlic in our recipe, and I thought for a while maybe we'd do something to scare off the vampires, but there is only one recipe to make when it comes to garlic for me, and that is garlic bread. I have a bit of an unhealthy obsession with garlic bread, but I'm going to do garlic bread with a twist today. So this one is going to be a garlic bread babka. If you've not heard of babka before, it's a Jewish leavened bread, which means it's got eggs and butter in there to make it lovely, light and fluffy. And babka is also plaited, so you can see see all of the filling on the inside. Ours is going to be garlic butter, but you can find babka in tons of different varieties. First up, we're going to make that dough because we need to leave it to rise, and then we'll be back in a few to make our garlic butter filling. To begin, you want to get yourself a pan on a medium heat and warm up your milk. We want this to be lukewarm but not boiling, so keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn. Once it's ready, pour it into a bowl and sprinkle over your yeast. Give this a whisk through and then leave it to one side for 5-10 to ten minutes until the mixture starts to bubble. In a separate jug I'm going to crack my eggs and then give them a quick whisk before pouring in my yeasty milk as well. Whisk this through until they are both well combined. You can knead your dough by hand but because we're going to add butter a bit at a time it's easier to do this with a stand mixer. Place your flour and your salt in and then mix that through before making a well in the middle. Pour your milk mixture into the middle and then using a dough hook we want to start this off on a slow speed bringing it together and then as it gets more combined bring up the speed so it needs it for about 5 minutes. Once the dough is smooth we're then going to start adding our butter and I've chopped mine up into cubes and let that come to room temperature so it's nice and soft. You want to add in a spoonful at a time, giving it enough chance for all of that butter to incorporate into the dough before you add the rest. You'll notice the dough should become lovely and elastic looking. Keep on kneading it for about another 5-10 to 10 minutes. At this point, when it's springy to the touch, we then need to pop that into a greased bowl to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm going to cover it with cling film and then pop it into a warm place to rise for about an hour until it's doubled in size. Okay, so our babka dough has had a chance to double in size, so now we can move on to preparing our filling. And for garlic bread, that needs to be the best tasting garlic butter, and we'll flavour that with some fresh parsley as well. That's going to add a real vibrant green into our babka. Now traditionally, babka has lots of swirls of the filling in there, and we're going to cut it out so we can see that cross section. That's why we want all that green to really stand out. Then I'm going to shape this one into a lightning bolt, because it's my Harry Potter kitchen, and that is what we do. <laughs> okay, this is how you can make your garlic butter filling for your babka. To begin you want to break off your cloves of garlic and then peel them. 
I'm going to pop these through my garlic crusher and press them through. I'm then going to place a pan on a medium heat and add in about a tablespoon of my butter just to help us start to caramelise the garlic. Keep the garlic moving so it doesn't burn and this should only take about 30 seconds to a minute. In a separate bowl I've got myself some butter that's softened to room temperature and I'm going to pour over my fried garlic. Season this with salt and pepper and then I'm going to prepare the parsley. All you need to do is pull the leaves off the stem and then roughly chop them. Remember we want that green to stand out in the bubka so don't chop it too finely. Stir the parsley through your garlic butter and then it's good to go. To assemble the bubka I'm going to knock the air back slightly by kneading it for about a minute and then I'm going to place it onto a lightly floured worktop. You then want to roll this out trying to keep it as square as possible until it's about half a centimetre thin. Take your garlic butter and an offset spatula and then spread an even layer over the bubka. I'm then going to roll the babka as tight as I can, being careful not to spill out too much of the filling and trying to make sure it has a nice even thickness. You then want to get yourself a serrated knife and gently cut your way along the babka to reveal the insides. A quick tip is to oil your knife to prevent it from sticking. Next you want to get yourself your baking tray and I'm going to make sure that it is nicely greased. Place both your lengths of babka on, crossing them at the top. You then want to weave them over and under each other while working it into your lightning bolt shape. Squeeze the ends and then tuck them underneath to hold it in place. You can then cover this with cling film again and we're going to let it rise one more time for an hour until it's doubled in size. Okay so our bobka has risen wonderfully so now it's time for the all important bake. If you're making a different filling such as a sweet bobka or one that's not garlic butter based then 10 minutes before it comes out of the oven you want to brush it with some melted butter just to give it a lovely golden finish but because ours is so rich with butter already we should get that without any additional effort. I've also got to give a shout out to my friend Mickey who introduced me to chala and we had garlic chala and that's what this is inspired by. Hopefully I've done you justice. All right let's get this in the oven and then wait for that almighty smell to fill our kitchen. You want to bake your bubka in the oven at 180 degrees celsius or 350 fahrenheit for about half an hour. Once it's lovely and golden brown and you can smell all of those wonderful garlic aromas in your kitchen you want to remove it from the oven and leave it to cool slightly on the tray for about 10 minutes. Once it's firmed up you can then transfer it onto your serving board and your garlic bread bubka is ready to go. So there you have it. That is our lightning bolt Harry Potter twist on babka. This is a savoury babka garlic bread. So we've infused that with some freshly homemade garlic butter and decorated it into our signature lightning bolt. Let me know down below in the comments if you're looking forward to giving this one a go. That's all for this week's recipe. But if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. Then you'll get an alert every magic Monday when there's a brand new video. I'm off to enjoy my garlic bread. So I'll see you next week. When it comes to garlic bread, I don't do small portions. Mmm, so good. <laughs>